Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at four examples of the VLOOKUP function of Excel. So we will be uncovering four great reasons why you should be using this terrific function right now. And we're going to kick off with example number one on screen which is simply to improve the accuracy and the ease of data entry. Something that most people have to do on a spreadsheet unless you're downloading or importing it from elsewhere. So in this basic example, we have some travel expenses. I've got some uh, five different offices that we travel to and then I've got them written down column A here and I simply need to return the miles. Now to quickly mention, typically this table on the right would be in a different sheet or maybe even a different workbook entirely. It's unlikely to be right next to the table like I'm demonstrating here simply for the purposes of learning, although it could be. So let's kick off with this VLOOKUP. I need to look for that uh, office in this table, return the mileage. So if I zoom in here in cell B3, I will start off my V lookup, my vertical lookup. And the lookup value it prompts me for is in this scenario, Bristol or simply A3, comma. The table array will be this table on the right hand side. I don't need to highlight the headers as well, although I could do. It's a bit, a bit pointless too. I'm going to fix that reference, put in my comma, enter in number two for the column index number. So I want to return miles, which is the second column of this table array, and a comma and then false to specify a precise match. Now, I'm not spending too much time here talking about VLOOKUP. Um, I'm pretty confident that most of you watching this especially if you're some of my regular viewers, you will know about this function already. What I will do is put a link in the description of this video for those of you who may not be so confident or too aware of this, so that you can uh, beef up your skills in VLOOKUP, uh, probably to do it first before you see these examples. Although I will be providing a kind of mini um, detail on what I do as I write them. So that is my first VLOOKUP. I'll press enter, I'll copy it down, and here we have ourselves our first example done. As soon as somebody specifies where they went in here, VLOOKUP automatically returns the mileage from the other place. I can simply put that I went to Leeds. I can press tab key is what that was, you know, moving to the next cell, and immediately my formulas have copied down my VLOOKUP has done its thing and my little formula in here has then calculated the uh, supposed costs and there you go it's accurate saves me looking it up saves me copying and pasting it typing it in whatever it's also quicker and easier and that is example number one okay so here is example number two where we are going to see VLOOKUP performing some complex logical formulas and to do this, we're going to take advantage of VLOOKUP's ability to perform approximate matches, otherwise known as range lookups. So we've got this scenario where depending on the quantity ordered by a customer will determine how big a discount they get. On the right hand side, we've created a table with the quantity and then the discount, which as you see increases over uh, as the quantity increases. Now, if I was going to use, for example, nested ifs or formulas with if and and, this can all be done, but that is going to be a bit of a monster of a formula. There's a lot of conditions to test, so now they're between two values and it's about six conditions to test. VLOOKUP is going to simplify that greatly. So notice that the table on the right the quantities are in ascending order, and that is essential for what we're about to do. These range lookups, the you know, 
the <laughs> lookup value, the leftmost column of the table array, must be sorted in ascending order. Anyhow, that's done. Let's get the VLOOKUP done. Cell C2, this is happening. The others already have formulas. They've already got the data we need. VLOOKUP in cell C2. The lookup value is the quantity that this customer have ordered. A2. Comma, the table away is on this right-hand side again. Let me fix that again. The column number once again is 2. Discount is in column G. The second column of the table array, though, quantity is 1, discount is 2. And the range lookup is true. There are other ways of specifying this kind of information. You know, 1 is true, 0 is false. But I'm going to enter true. I could also omit the question. This is an optional argument. If I don't do anything, they would assume true. You can see it telling me on screen, approximate match, the values in the first column must be sorted. And they are column F I'm talking about here. They are. So closing bracket, press enter, copy that down. You can see that the correct discount is returned. 893 returns 20%. 24 returns none, 190 is 10%. It's returning the right discount, and then column D is calculating based on that. So that is another reason why you want to be using VLOOKUP. They can, depending on the logic, greatly simplify this multiple conditional formulas that quite often nested ifs are used to perform. OK, now, for example, number three, we're going to see VLOOKUP creating a dynamic report, a dynamic chart. These can look great in your reports and your dashboards. So this chart doesn't look very great at the moment because it has no data. This chart is using this range over here, A2 to B10, and there are no sales values. And that's because we are going to get VLOOKUP to do that therefore creating that dynamism. Now, this is all going to be dependent on the selection from D2. I have a simple drop-down list in here created using data validation of Canada, Denmark, and France. They are three countries that I have set up this pretend sales data for. Now, I have another sheet tab in here called Chart Data. In Chart Data, Canada, Denmark, and France. Three tables with the sales of these product categories in each of those countries. What I want to do, somebody on the report chooses, for example, Canada, and the moment that happens, VLOOKUP populates this area, and the chart runs off that, giving it a very impressive and interactive look and feel. Now, for this to work, each of these ranges, A2 to B10, D2 to E10, and G2 to H10 have all been named. Got a little drop down list up here. Look at this. We've got a Canada range. We've got a Denmark range. And we've got a France range right there. So I've created these defined names. If you're not sure how to do that, please you know, check out one of our tutorials on our website. I've spoken about it kind of many times. But they have been named. And that's going to be important here. I want to match the name that somebody chooses in D2 to the name of a table, and those names do match. So in cell B3, let's get this done. VLOOKUP is happening in B3. The lookup value is beverages, A3, comma, the table array. Now, whatever table somebody's chosen from cell D2. So I do want to choose D2, but I'm going to choose that in a function called indirect. Now, I will put a link in the description of this video to my video on great reasons to use indirect. It's another video I've done. It's another blog post I've done. Fantastic function for those of you who may not have seen that video already. But that will allow me to reference, that will kind of convert the content of cell D2 into a reference. So into that define name reference. Without it, this will not work. It's column two again, all my examples, just two columns wide. And it's a false this time, it's an exact match for the word 
beverages. I press enter, I copy it down, then we zoom out so you can see the chart uh, correctly this time, or just noticed I haven't fixed that reference in indirect. One of you guys could have told me. Here we go now, we're working. Let me zoom out, and here we go. And if I go to this drop down list and choose Denmark, change to Denmark. If I choose France, change it to France, back to Denmark, and so on. Giving a very impressive look and feel. Once again, like the first example, this table on the left would probably not be on the same sheet. It could be, you may want it there as well in, to supplement the chart. But quite typically, the, the user can't see that. All they can see is this bit over here. They would choose a country. The chart reacts to that selection. It's very impressive. People love this stuff and get a lot of data in one dashboard by providing kind of form controls like this and interactive elements. And VLOOKUP can really help us do that. Okay, for the last example of using the VLOOKUP function, we are going to see it comparing two lists. Such a common task uh, in Excel. I get asked it a lot in my training courses, you know, that I have this list, I download another list, I need to look for what's missing between the two or what might be duplicated between the two. Such a typical scenario. So we've got a basic example of it here. Got a list of fruit, got another list of fruit. I want to know, are there any items that are in fruit one but do not appear in fruit two? That is my pretend example for comparing these two lists. And you can adapt to that example to meet your exact requirements if you have to do this kind of thing too. Now, I would like Excel to change the color of the cell in column A, fruit one, to identify the two fruits, I, I happen to know it's two in this example, that are not in fruit two. That's what I want to do. I want to change the color of the cell. So because of that, that means conditional formatting. That's what I need. So we're going to put the formula in there. What I'm going to do first, though, is write it in the cell. So you guys can see the VLOOKUP quite clearly. Then I copy paste it into the conditional form and rule. Well, you may struggle to see it, but you won't need to at that point. And we'll see it working. So VLOOKUP, can you help me here? See if Apple, A2, and let me put a comma in there, table array. That's kind of getting in the way a little bit here, but it's C8 to C2, this list over here. Let me fix that. Uh, column one, the column index number, I've only got one column here. Column C is just one column. So there's only going to be one answer. And false on the end, exact match. That's what I need. I press enter, I'll copy it down. Instantly I can see that grapefruit and apple are the two fruits that do not appear in the other list. I can see that quite clearly. Uh, it's not very pretty, but it's doing the job. Now, when I do VLOOKUP in the conditional formatting rule, conditional formatting will want to be told if it's true or false. At the moment, VLOOKUP's not doing that. It's saying hash nay or melon. It's not saying true or false. So let me go back into that VLOOKUP and wrap a function called is an A around it. If you see the hash and A error message, which is what VLOOKUP returns when it can't produce a result, then say true. If you don't, then say false. And conditional formatting is going to love that. Still not a massive improvement for us in uh, its appearance or how it does it, but great for logical uh, features of Excel, formulas slash commands. Now I'm going to go in and uh, nick that formula. Let's copy that, pull out of that, get rid of that rubbish, don't need it anymore. Highlight the table that I want to identify them in and create my new rule. Conditional formatting here on the home tab. You guys don't know what that is. You got to check this out. One of Excel's most popular features by a mile. Everybody loves conditional formatting. Let me paste my formula in. Format these cells. Come on, here we go. Uh, well, what do you reckon, team? I, it's got to be green, isn't it? Green for Excel. Let's go for a darker green. Click OK, click OK. There you go. 
apple and grapefruit is what they are. Apple and grapefruit are the two fruits that appear in this list, but do not appear in that list. And that is just a basic example of how VLOOKUP can help us compare two lists. In my example, to find items that are in the first list and not that are missing in the second list. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on these four VLOOKUP examples. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergargard.com and on Facebook.